In this problem, we have a spherical, uh, thick spherical shell that is uh, uh, the inside radius of the where the shell begins is a radius uh, A, and the one to the outside is radius B. So this is a B minus A radius right here. And then uh, we do have a charge density of some sort of constant over R, where R is the uh, distance from here to here. That is the that is charge dis uh, the charge density. So the further that you get out, the uh, the less dense the charge density is for this uh, this this thick spherical shell. Of course, this is just a, cro a cross section. Uh, and so our goal is to find out the uh, find the potential of this shell where r equals zero. That's the whole goal of this problem right here. So of course where we'll begin with is uh, the radius is a function of r and we're gonna bring in that we're gonna do a line integral all the way out and we're gonna use infinity as our reference point and we're just gonna bring it all the way into here because we know that the, the the electric field is gonna be constant right here and then once we get into the here since the uh, the charge density is a function of r we're gonna to have to do another potential calculation, another integral right here. And then once we break this threshold right here into the hollow center, then we're gonna to have to do another one all the way into the center. So we'll have to break this integral up into three pieces, but the, the general integral right now is just uh, the uh, from the negative integral from zero, or from, oops, that's negative infinity, from uh, zero to infinity, or really you bring it from infinity to zero of the electric field dotted with the path that you choose, right? So let's go ahead and break that up into the three portions of that, uh, that integral. So what we have here is uh, the first portion is we're gonna go from, like I said, from, from infinity all the way to this, section, this portion right here. And that portion is gonna be where r equals b, so infinity to b. And what we got from using Gauss's law for this problem before was that the uh, uh, it was uh, 4 pi for the electric field it was 4 pi epsilon naught. I saved the 4 pi on the very top just in case we needed it for something, but it turns out we didn't. But I'm sorry. It's okay. It's better to be safe than sorry. And then so it's a 1 over epsilon naught. And this was problem uh, 2.15, I believe. So if you have any questions on how I got that, I recommend you go back to my video and uh, take a look at that. And then there's a constant k. Uh, the constant k was left over from that charge density right there. And of course, it was pointing in the uh, r hat direction. Now we dot that with our dl, and uh, the path that we're going to take is just using the r hat direction since we're in spherical coordinates. So it's a dr r hat. That way, since these are both in the r hat directions, these will just end up turning into multiplications. All right. So that's just for this section from zero or from infinity to the, the beginning of the shell, the thick spherical shell. Now we're going to do this section right here. So that will be from b to a. So now we're gonna do, we're gonna add the next integral, which since the integral is a negative, so we'll just subtract it. So uh, from B to A, so this is the section of the, uh, um, within the shell. And we found that back in that uh, previous problem, we found that the electric field on the inside of this spherical, thick spherical shell was equal to this. It was uh, mainly the difference between the wherever you choose to be at in here and uh, the the inside radius. So the further that you get out, the greater the, uh, 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 the electric field seems to get encompasses more electric charge, essentially. Okay, and that was pointing in the r hat direction, dotted with dr, whoops, r hat. All right, so again, that'll turn into a multiplication, and we'll tack on one more, and this is the section on the inside. We know that the um, the electric field on the inside is zero from the problem, and just from Gauss's law, right? Like, we, if we just a quick Gauss's law problem, if we did a Gaussian surface, the charge enclosed in here is zero since this is hollow, so the electric field is zero. Doesn't necessarily mean that the potential inside is zero, uh, because the, the potential, if you do, unlike Gauss's law, it's not what's just enclosed whenever you do the potential. It matters all what's on the outside. And so whenever we do the potential for this portion right here, uh, we'll go ahead and find out that that portion is actually equal to zero. The, con the contribution to that portion is equal to zero because the electric field here is zero. And we dot that with dr. Um, our hat, right? The contribution to the total potential is zero on the inside, but there's still other contributions 
to the potential. So the potential is non-zero on the inside. It's just that, like I said, the contribution is zero right there. So let's go ahead and start evaluating the integral. First thing that we can do is recognize that there is a constant term to all these. We can just go ahead and forget about that. But there's a constant um, k epsilon naught to all these. And there's a constant uh, minus, actually. So we'll just go ahead and take out the minus so we're just using uh, positive signs for now. So so we go ahead and take out that positive sign right there. And for this integral, we can go ahead, for the first one, first component, we can go ahead and take out that b minus a since that is constant. The dot product turns into a multiplication because they are both pointing in the same hatted direction. I should, yeah. So this is a to b for this next portion, the portion that's on the inside of the spherical shell. We can't pull out this portion because we have an r uh, minus a in there, but that's dr. To make this a little bit more concrete, we can sh we can show that this is actually. Oops, we can show that this is actually. R, uh, let's see here, 1 over R minus A over R squared. We're just distributing the denominator. And R, and of course, the those are the main two components since this last portion here was equal to 0. So we'll go ahead and curl, close this curly bracket. So now the next step is to actually evaluate all these integrals right here. So we'll go ahead and put the negative K epsilon naught here. Uh, we still have a b minus a right here, and whenever we evaluate this first integral right here, that's going to be a negative 1 over r squared, so negative 1 over r squared, or negative 1 over r evaluated from b to infinity. So I'll just go ahead and write that, so negative, let's see here, I'll put the negative all the way on the outside here, negative uh, 1 over r squared evaluated from b to infinity, 1 over infinity, 1 over infinity is of course equal to 0, so now the next portion is to go ahead and do this next integral. And we'll just break it up into two components here. And we'll do a big, another, uh, let's do brackets here. Uh, so this first portion is going to be, this portion is going to be uh, natural log, right? That's what that integral 1 over r squared. So natural log uh, evaluated a and then natural log minus the natural log evaluated at b. And then the next portion, minus is equal to a, so it's negative, of course, negative 1 over a, evaluated from, uh, let's see here, b, negative 1 to a to b, and then in parentheses right there. And actually, this ends up being a plus, this ends up being a plus because the so the whole thing will be negative right here, but then the uh, integral of this is negative 1 over r squared. So the the, neg the extra negative made this whole thing a plus sign right here. So now we'll take a step back and actually we'll just go ahead and distribute this negative sign in. So let's see, I'll do a plus here. That'll turn this into a plus. Um, let's see here. I'll just make this negative for now. It's better just to do this in small steps or epsilon naught, big parentheses. Next step, I'll just go ahead and distribute this uh, b, 1 over b. So that was would be, uh, let's see here, 1 minus um, a over b, right? Minus, the, I'll go ahead and distribute this negative natural log. So minus the natural log identity, which would be a over b, right? So that's the minus sign here, and the minus sign here. We'll turn that whole thing into a negative, so negative. And then we'll distribute this a into these two components. So a over a is 1, and then plus a over b, and brackets. Looks like everything's going to collapse kind of nicely. We have a minus 1, uh, positive 1, and we have a minus a over b and positive a over b. What's left of all this stuff is just a negative natural log. And then actually one thing that we can do to keep this kind of neat is just uh, distribute this natural log on the inside, which kind of just flips these two values here. So it's the natural log of B minus A. And that ends up being our, um, that ends up being our, our potential actually for 
evaluated at the center. So one thing to note is that it only depends on on the difference between these two. If I wish I could better get this and this in focus, let me go ahead and just bring this down here, along with my cool little sticker that I got. Um, the the program that I use, they just added these little cute little stickers, so I figured I'd add them here. Um, so anyways, the uh, this really just depends on how thick the, the the shell is actually, which is which is kind of nice. And if if we look and if the if the inner shell is equal in radius to the outer shell, aka there's there's no shell or it's infinitely thin, then there's nothing. This whole this whole term, the entire potential goes to nothing, which makes sense, right? Because the potential on the outside not only matters what's on the inside, but it also matters what's on the outside. And if there's nothing on the outside, then there's no potential difference right here. So that makes sense. And then, of course, if, uh, if A ends up being greater than B, then you kind of run into some problems, right? That's whenever this whole term ends up being negative and then that just kind of means like that the inner shell is greater than the outer shell, which means you should probably redefine these problems anyways. But yeah, that, that seems to make sense. We take a step back and we apply our the potential that we got to the problem and uh, it seems to make sense. So it was a pretty cool problem.